Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we can see that we had a relatively good week. You know, for the most part, the market was up 1% for the week. And this is uh, a follow-up to last week, which was basically the best week for 2012 for the S&P 500. So overall, you know, we had a good week. Uh, the dollar declining 1%, gold's back above 1600 around 1625 You can see we had a slight gain for crude oil at around $84 per barrel. The big thing over the week was, again, Europe and the, the turmoil in Europe was, for the most part, the driving factor of the week. We had Spain um, requesting its bailout money. Um, Moody's downgraded Spain's rating, debt rating, um, but they, they requested their bailout, and the question is whether or not it was too little and too late. Um, Greece tomorrow on Sunday is holding another election to try to see if they can get some type of ruling majority for their political situation. And of course, the question is, once they have that, will they stay in or will they exit the euro? Um, and, and exiting the euro will bring about, you know, rumors of 2008 declines. Uh, so, you know, the European information really uh, garnered, drove the, uh, the market for the week. Corporate news. Of course, uh, I don't have it on there, but of course, Apple had their WWDC where they did not, I repeat, did not announce the new iPhone. Of course, they had some great iOS stuff, iOS 6. Um, it's a great new MacBook Pros, uh, but they did not announce the iPhone 5 at the conference, so that'll be interesting. Uh, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon did testify before the Senate Banking Committee about their their uh, the loss that they had last quarter. He said they'll be profitable this quarter. And there really wasn't anything, you know, monumental on the economic, economic news size. Now, going into this week, um, you know, we really don't have anybody on earnings. I got FedEx up there, uh, Bed Bath Beyond, things like that, but nothing huge. But we do have on Wednesday the Fed policy announcement and, of course, the new uh, uh, Bernanke's press conference and the FOMC forecast. All of that's on Wednesday. The meeting, of course, starts on Tuesday. So that's probably going to be the driving factor for the week. All right, so we look at our market simulators. We have the dollar, the dollar which had a good month of May. Zoom on in here. And you can see the one thing is we're starting to break below that 82. Maybe the 50 moving average here will act as support um, down here at 81. But we're, uh, we have a double top here and a little weakness here in the dollar. So sideways maybe even sideways it out even though it's in the uptrend uh, we may we're starting to see a little weakness there in the dollar so what does that mean for gold well gold got itself back above 1600 as we said before and now uh this area in here the 1650 is 1640 price level will it act as resistance as it did last week um so gold uh living once again uh and finally crude oil as we said made its way up a little bit here into the $84 range, um, but it's still basing in this range. We want to see $90 act as resistance for our pocketbooks. So here we are looking at the S&P 500, and one thing to look at here on our daily chart is, we'll come over here, let's grab our trend line tool, and just take a quick look to see, you know, what's going on over here. So we still have some ways to go to take out these uh, this down immediate downtrend line. You know, uh, certainly from October of last year, we're going to uptrend, but we do have a lower high in here. We have broken this lower high coming from from here, 
All right, let's try it one more time. There we go. We have broken this uh, this price action right here, and you can see actually when we broke it, it became support, but we haven't broken uh, this one. Another thing that's important to, to look at here is that um, the price action in here from February, and we dipped again here early March. You could say maybe we air kissed it here in April, but that is now our resistance 1350 ish, 1345 ish. That's where we're at right now. That's where we close. So if we break above that, then we're going to start to go in and test this uh, April, May uh, swing low here and here. So we're, we certainly have ha had a good week. You can see the great uh, day we had last week, but we ended the market strong here and we've brought ourselves right back to resistance about 1345. And again, that puts us right into some of the key action from this year. What was once support is now resistance. Our indicators have more room to go up, although Stochastics is getting a little bit overbought. But RSI, MACD have more room to go up to the upside. So we'll zoom on out here to the weekly, take a look. And we have a couple nice candles. We've taken out this big red candle here. However, we have one more big red candle to take out. You can see where it was support here, a little bit of resistance here. Um, so again, 1345 certainly big for us. As far as price action, we're getting um, it was oversold, and we're getting a little hook up here. Uh, whoops, we're getting a little hook up here, so that's good. Um, so, uh, but we're still on the overbought side of uh, MACD, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. We'll go out one more time, see if we got multi time frame agreement all the way out to the monthly. Going to go ahead and zoom on in here. And we can see uh, June trying to take back a lot of the, the negativity out of uh, the month of May. So we're getting about halfway through. And once you get halfway through, now we're talking. But on our monthly, we are definitely still on the top side of here, the overbought side. So um, we'll, we'll have to see. We're going to have to be aggressive. I'm sorry. We're going to have to be uh, conservative and see what's going to be our catalyst. That's what I always talk about. What's going to be our catalyst moving forward? Next week we do have some economic catalyst with the FOMC. But we know that we're in summertime and that's when things slow down just a little bit. So we really can see here on a NASDAQ as we get on a daily this consolidation. We don't really see with the S&P 500 we saw the bounce off the 200 moving average and we moved higher. And although we have moved higher here on the NASDAQ, we're really more in a range. In that range of 27.35 up to, you know, 20.60, 2900. Uh, we've got the resistance of the 50 moving average here. So the, the NASDAQ is lagging just a little bit behind the S&P 500. But um, hopefully we can, let's see here. Yeah, you can see this 2900 has a, a swing low right here and a little price action in here. So that is our next level, and again, that's where the 50 moving average is. Um, there is a little bit more room to go up the upside on the NASDAQ there, but the indicators, for the most part, are really just going sideways. Um, zooming in on the weekly, you can see, again, remember on the S&P 500, we had two green candles where we're, we're really get, we got sideways price action here and a hammer on the uh, NASDAQ here. So um, in our indicators... Are trying to loop back up, but again, without that catalyst, um, we're we're starting to see that sideways price action and we, that range bound price action. And so it's going to be interesting to see where we go from here. Uh, and we can see um, not halfway up. S and P was halfway up. Nasdaq is not, and of course, Nasdaq is on a monthly. Really, is a little bit more bearish than it is bullish. All right, let's take a look at our market leaders here. We can see Apple, and you know we said that the Nasdaq was a little bit sideways, and you can really see that in Apple here. Really see some sideways price action. We got 580 is our, our resistance up here. So uh, Apple, I'm going to say sideways, maybe sideways up. Um, moving on to Amazon, Amazon is a little bit interesting because uh, uh, we had this beautiful gap up here on earnings, pulled back to our 50 moving average. And now we've got this 220 resistance once again. Um, again, it's why I draw the line. <laughs> um, 
So uh, Amazon, I'm going to say sideways also. Uh, Facebook. Who knew Facebook lives? Facebook at that. Facebook lives on Friday. Uh, we'll go down here to the one hour. You really get a good look at what what's happened here. Um, you can see over here the channel that we're in. We broke out of that, came down, finally put in some support. And then if I zoom on in, you can see really that price action taking up uh, and moving up. So um, you know we we have this resistance now at 31 uh, that we're headed towards. Um, but I'll give it sideways. I'm going to say up there. I'm going to say sideways on Facebook. Uh, let's go back to the daily. Um, what about Google? Google is weak. How about that? Google, I'm going to have to say sideways to down. Found some support here in 550. If we break 550, um, you know, you can see this is where we stopped before. We had the 200 moving average there to stop us before. This time we're already below the 200 moving average and we're also below the 500 moving average. So if we stop here, uh, certainly uh, there's something here going on at 540. But really, you know, we could go all the way down to 500 if we don't stop here at 560. Sideways, sideways to down for Google. Goldman Sachs. So Amazon and Apple sideways, sideways to up. That's tech. Google's tech though, so I guess that didn't, didn't really work. Um, uh, Goldman Sachs uh, definitely weak here. Uh, started off great for 2012. It's given it all for the most part back. Now it's kind of going sideways. Goldman Sachs sideways, sideways to down. Uh, IBM lives once again. It, it, it was showing some weakness here. We had our double top pattern that we broke. Uh, got down to the 200 moving average here. And now we're back up here. So this is good, but we're you can kind of see where this uh, middle of the double M here, uh, maybe this 200 price level, psychological level price level, will act as resistance. So we'll have to say. So sideways, maybe even sideways to up. Intel, which follows IBM, is doing the exact same thing. Um, it found the 200 moving average and it's waking, it's working this back up. And then this middle price level here, which is 2750 ish, it's probably going to be resistance. Sideways for Intel, Mastercard. Seeing that sideways price action here, you can see the double bottom here. Um, what was resistance? But you can see it's uh, it's above, uh, it's above that. So uh, probably gotta get above 430 to start testing some of the highs. Sideways, sideways up there. Uh, Netflix. Uh, people thought Netflix was gonna get bought out. It didn't happen. You can see sideways, sideways to down, sitting at the lows here around 61. Sideways to down on Netflix. And then Priceline. Uh, Priceline you, usually works with IBM and Intel. Um, not really getting that. We did bounce here, but really just seeing sideways price action. As we come to our education spotlight, we're going to again talk about the dangers of ignoring, ignoring our emotions and our trading. And the big thing is when you're not focused on discipline, and more specifically, when you're not a rules-based trader, your emotions can distort what we observe. You know, uh, how many of us have had that friend that was in love, and we're telling them, you know, that this woman, or this man's no good for you, and they're like, oh, but I love her. <laughs> well, the stock market is the same way, you know. Uh, your system is telling you to get out of this trade, but you're saying you love this stock, you love this force pair, and you want to stick it out. And you, you get in that tick by tick battle. You get one tick in your favor and three ticks against you, but then it ticks back in your favor. And you, you know, your emotions are distorting what you see. When everything in your system, had you been rules based, tells you to get out, you're staying in. Or your emotions tell you, ooh, I don't want to miss out, so I need to get in early. When when your system has not triggered your confirmation to get in, so uh, again, if you can't control your emotions, they truly, truly can blow up your trading and blow up your trading account. Um, they form their own form of self communication because you know you're you're talking in your head, and you're rationalizing, rationalizing, you know why you should stay in a trade or why you should get in early. Again, your emotions they, they can drive. All of your decisions, if you don't keep them a check, and more importantly, if you don't have rules, you don't have a criteria, and you don't have the discipline to follow that system. Emotions can be very dangerous. Of course, you can find us at Move Up With Mike on uh, YouTube and Twitter, or your financial letter, our, our page on Facebook. 
And we have our same resources. We have our coaching where we can help you one-on-one, um, our managed forex account, put our expertise for work. And for our stock market folks, we have a little uh, trick here for you to help you with your trading. But in the end, it's about you and your trader's mindset and your ability to be focused and disciplined to follow your system. And we can help you build that psychological capital, pull the trigger on each and every trade through our coaching program. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.